Joining us now is Sam Kulkarni, Chair and CEO of CRISPR Therapeutics. Sam, welcome. I, I want to understand exactly your place in these CRISPR treatments that are going to be coming to market. You got a $200 million payment for uh, this approval. You've got about, I believe, a 40% share of profits going forward. It kind of seems, in a way, like an ARM or a Qualcomm in the chip world, providing some of the key technology for a smartphone or a PC to work. Thank you, John, for having me. Uh, it is a watershed moment in the history of biomedicine with the first CRISPR approval and a great day for patients suffering from sickle cell disease who now have an option. Uh, this is the first time we as humans have figured out how to modify our own genome to provide a potential cure for various diseases, and in this case, sickle cell disease. This is all powered by this powerful technology called CRISPR-Cas9 that was elucidated about 10 years ago and was the reason for the Nobel Prize in 2020. CRISPR Therapeutics is at the vanguard of taking this technology platform and enabling various medicines with it, whether it's sickle cell disease or thalassemia, heart disease, cancers, et cetera. And we are sort of like the engine, uh, like you said with ARM, John, we are the engine that provides the technology, but we also take the risk and make the medicine. Mm. Uh, so we're, we're, we're excited about not just this approval, but everything else in our pipeline that's coming behind it. So I, I want to talk about the pipeline. Tell me about that. But also, for, on behalf of investors, I'm concerned about the delivery mechanism. Oversimplifying here, you're using bacteria to edit genes, and there's this immune response sometimes uh, that, that cells have. How scalable uh, are, are, can you be sure that the technology is at this point, and how full is the pipeline uh, potentially of solutions to uh, diseases that can be addressed at lower cost than this initial sickle cell treatment? Yeah, that was a risk about seven or eight years ago that people wondered if there's any immune reaction from for towards the CRISPR-Cas9 proteins. But we've now done several clinical trials, and in our clinical trial for sickle cell, for instance, we showed that there's no such risk. The CRISPR-Cas9 delivery technology can be delivered safely into cells or directly into patients without any reactions. And we're trying to make it more and more a scalable platform. Uh, in, in these diseases, we can deliver to various organs of interest. For instance, we can do liver gene editing. In the case of sickle cell, we edit the cells ex vivo outside the body and then deliver the cells to the patient. Uh, and the data are so far are remarkable. And we think this is a very scalable platform that can apply to many, many diseases. So it raises the question. And I realize when we're talking about sickle cell specifically, Sam, uh, you're partnered with Vertex on the commercialization and the access and the manufacturing um, of this treatment specifically, but, but when you talk about all of the different applications for this type of gene editing technology writ large, how big is the total addressable market? Yeah, the sky is the limit. You know, we're not just talking about one or two indications or tens of indications. In fact, it's more than that. Uh, in fact, I see the whole biopharma market shifting. You know, in the late 80s, you saw a shift in the biopharma market from small molecules to antibodies. And today, proteins and antibodies make up 50% of the entire biopharma market. You're going to see a similar shift over the next 10 to 15 years towards cell and gene therapies. And my prediction is a third of the biopharma market are going to be these advanced cell and gene therapies. And we sit right at the cutting edge of this secular movement in the industry. So what does that mean in terms of near-term, medium-term, long-term strategy for the company specifically? Given the fact that you did uh, update your pipeline just last week, cut two cancer programs, and announced that you're going to expand into autoimmune diseases. Yeah, first of all, with Casjevi, this is a remarkable medicine. You know, for those who don't know sickle cell disease, these patients live with chronic pain, but they also have acute crisis, end up in the hospital several times a year. And with Casjevi, what patients have said is, uh, and the data have shown is that they are eliminating these hospitalizations. They're eliminating these acute crises. Uh, some of our investigators and patients call this a cure. Uh, so with this type of transformational therapy, uh, we have a partnership with Vertex. We're now commercializing this around the globe, and we expect several patients to benefit from this therapy. Beyond this, obviously, we're trying to bring many of the programs to the clinic. Uh, we're particularly excited about our cancer programs where we retrain immune cells to kill and eliminate the cancer cells. Mm -hmm. 
we also have a program where we directly inject the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, delivery solution into the veins that go to the liver and edit your liver cells. And a one-shot injection can reduce your LDL cholesterol by 40 to 50% for life, uh, as we've shown in monkeys. Uh, we also have a program towards type 1 diabetes, where we make artificial pancreatic islet cells. Okay. Uh, so the sky's the limit here.